I cried to men, I would be crucified. And they said, Why should your blood be upon our heads? Hi, this is Nidhish Vasu and I read writings and poetry from the great saints and sages from across time to help us introspect where we are at in our lives at the moment and to help us evolve and become better students, better children, better parents, better friends, better lovers and better humans. Welcome to a Stereo Tales presentation. You're listening to Sages and the Madman with Nidish Vasu. Thank you for listening to my podcast. This week, we continue reading from Khalil Gibran's work. And in each episode, we'll also try to gather insights into the experiences and struggles of Gibran's life that shaped his personality and inspired his work. This week, we take a look at Jesus's influence in shaping the Khalil Gibran we know. Jesus's life had a huge impact on Khalil Gibran. Jesus features prominently across his works. He has also written a book called Jesus, Son of Man, on the life of Jesus from the eyes of a diverse set of people. Gibran was born into a family of Maronite Christians who aligned themselves to the Roman Church. His mother's father was also a Maronite priest. When his mother sent him off to Beirut to study, it was in a Maronite Christian school. Christianity and the life of Christ were subjects he was enthralled with. Did you know that after Khalil Gibran's bestseller, The Prophet, Jesus, Son of God, was his second most popular book? In the book, his lead character has lived in exile for 12 years. And interestingly, Gibran wrote this book when he had spent 12 years in New York trying to write. However, even before he wrote the book, his writings bore influences from Jesus' life and how he related to Jesus. His life also had inspirations from Buddhism, Islam and Christianity. In his formative years, he spent a lot of time with progressive people who propagated the ideology of religion of love. Today, we'll take a look at the fable from Khalil Gibran's The Madman called The Crucified. I cried to men, I would be crucified. And they said, Why should your blood be upon our heads? And I answered, How else shall you be exalted except by crucifying madmen? And they heeded and I was crucified. And the crucifixion appeased me. And when I was hanged between earth and heaven, they lifted up their heads to see me. And they were exalted for their heads had never before been lifted. But as they stood looking up at me, one called out, For what art thou seeking to atone? And another cried, In what cause dost thou sacrifice thyself? And a third said, Thinkest thou with this price to buy world glory? Then said a fourth, Behold how he smiles. Can such pain be forgiven? And I answered them all and said, Remember only that I smiled. I do not atone, nor sacrifice, nor wish glory, and I have nothing to forgive. I thirsted and I besought you to give me my blood to drink. For what is there can quench a madman's thirst but his own blood? I was dumb and I asked wounds of you for mouths. I was imprisoned in your days and nights, and I sought a door into larger days and nights. And now I go, as others already crucified have gone, and I think not we are weary of crucifixion, for we must be crucified by larger and yet larger men, between greater earths and greater heavens. Through this tale, Gibran talks about the purpose of Christ's life to be crucified for the spiritual upliftment of humankind. The madman seeks to be crucified. People want to know why he'd want such a thing. He tells them that this is the only way that they can find deliverance. Deliverance from suffering and misery. When they crucify him and he rises up towards the heavens, as he rises, they look up at him. In that process, they're exalted, as their heads had never been risen before. 
This is not a mere reference to the rising of the physical head, but the rising of oneself from the lower human vices and thinking to higher thinking and imbibing of high values from looking up to a spiritual master. People asked him material minded questions. If he sought to atone for some sin or to sacrifice himself in return for something or if he sought glory in exchange. Some could not bear to see the pain the madman bore. The madman simply smiles. They wondered if such pain was forgivable. The madman denied these reasons and said that no one needed forgiving. He merely thirsted to drink his own blood. This is no cannibalistic reference of drinking human blood. The blood here refers to the cosmic energy that vitalizes him, that vitalizes all of us. The cosmic energy is what quenches all of man's thirst. It is what will take him towards enlightenment or self-realization. The madman feels disappointed. He asked for crucifixion, for the exaltation of man. Yet man remains full of doubt and materially bound and also seeks to bind him, the madman, with their limiting understanding of the world. The madman though refuses to tire of crucifixion. He says that he is up for it again and again if he needs to endure it in another time or realm or reality. For man, larger men between greater earths and greater heavens. He won't stop till he's freed each and every one of us, wherever we may be. The madman in this tale is like Christ, who is a great master of the world. He has come to show us the truth, to show us the way to rise and evolve. Another thing to mention here is that of crucifixion itself. The deeper meaning would be to rise above a materialistic minded human life and body consciousness, to understand and be ready to bear the great pain of the troubles of life and allowing ourselves to learn from the effects of our sins, of the process of crucifixion, of letting go of whatever is holding us back, keeping us attached to our physical body. Gibran's madman makes one more important point. How else shall you be exalted except by crucifying madmen? How do we crucify madmen? Initially, by ridiculing them, then ostracizing them and opposing them and their ideas in whatever way possible. In the process, a sort of connection forms. We study their lives, teachings, purpose. Through this connection, the madmen take upon themselves our sins. Through crucifixion, they cleanse us of our sins. We rise from ignorance. We now understand their lives, their teachings, and the purpose of their lives in crucifixion itself. A very important point Gibran makes here, it takes a great master, full of mercy, full of grace, to exalt us from our ignorance. How can one drink this blood or cosmic energy? How would we rise above cosmic consciousness? Prayer? Is it devotion? Meditation? How are you working to commune with your higher self? Are you making the effort to spend some time to make this connection? I'd like to hear your views on my interpretation of this tale. Please write to me on our Facebook or Instagram page. You can also email me. Thank you for listening into this week's podcast. Please try to take some time out in the quiet just before you go to sleep to introspect, to look within, to be grateful, to make a note of everything you've learned today. Let this be a time you spend for yourself, loving yourself, appreciating the good from the day and the lessons learned. If you pray, please do send out a prayer of healing for the world as the world begins to get back to work. Pray for those in need of healing and those at high risk. See you next week and be safe. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, please hit subscribe and make sure you share the link with others who'd enjoy the experience. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at themadman at stereotales.com with your thoughts, suggestions, questions, ideas, and more. Please also write in if you'd like to partner with us or if you'd like to feature us on your blog or newsletter. Don't forget to rate our podcast. Thank you for listening and for all your support. You've been listening to a Stereo Tales presentation.